Hello and welcome. Today I am really excited to be taking you guys through my Linux desktop setup. I'm going to chuck a picture up on screen of what we're going to be going through. There's a lot of stuff here that's custom. We're going to go through the distros, the scripts, the themes, everything. I think you guys are really going to like it. Let's get into it. Now that we're here on the desktop, I will do the thing that you guys are all wanting me to do. So let's run NeoFetch and I will introduce the setup to you real quick. So what we're rocking here is Artix Linux. Now this is an Arch variant. It's Arch pretty much without systemd. I'm using OpenRC instead. And I'll get to my choice in distro later on in the video. I'm not a systemd hater or anything like that. So that's not what you're in for. We're running Artix with KDE Plasma 6. Kwin is the window manager. In terms of hardware, I'll show you guys the full system in just a sec, but we're running an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. We've got a 6900 XT graphics card and 64 gigabytes of memory. If I show you the age top real quick, isn't that juicy? Check that out. That is a nice age top if I've ever seen one. So that's the NeoFetch. This is the thing. You'll see we've got some styles going on here. I'm going to take a step back, demo you the entire setup in the real world, and then we'll talk plasma themes, everything else, the layout, good stuff like that. Okay, let's go over the setup in its entirety. So over here, we'll go from left to right. We have four AOC 24G2 1080p 144Hz IPS monitors. These things are actually a pretty good deal for what you can get them at. They're like, um, I got them for like 200 Australian dollars. I think they're even cheaper now, but four monitors is not actually that unachievable. I collected these things over the course of years. Like some of these are three years old. Some of them are one and a half years old and some of them I bought last year. But anyway, this is pretty much how it goes. Over here, we've got my keyboard. This is the Logitech G910 Orion Spark keyboard. I've had this thing for about six years, since like 2016. It's crazy. This thing is a great keyboard. I wouldn't swap it out for the world. I did have to clean it a little bit before this video though, because I did notice it was getting a bit grim, but I mean, it's a six year old keyboard, what do you expect? Then over here, we've got a Microsoft Surface 4. This I picked up for like 50 bucks from a family friend. They were just getting rid of it and it's pretty good. It just sits on my desk, does stuff. You know, it's a excellent solitaire machine. If you guys are into that, you can you know, boot up your favorite Solitaire game, play a bit of that on the side, but yeah, no, it works great, and uh, it's good for just pulling stuff up. Then over here is the main event. Now, like I told you before, this thing has an AMD 5950X 32 core. We've got an EVGA X570 for the win motherboard, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and the power color Red Devil Ultimate 6900 XT graphics card. Here's what it looks like from afar. And yeah, it's a pretty nice thing. I'll chuck my chair in the mix too. So this is just, you know, one of those Amazon ergonomic chairs. It's nothing too crazy. Probably cost a couple hundred dollars. But yeah, this is the setup. It's pretty nice. I've been a Linux user for a really long time. I'm talking full time since about 2019 and then sporadically on and off before then. And I have to say, over the five or so years I've been full time, I've come to this particular layout. So this layout right here has not changed in probably around about two or three years. So I think it's probably time that I make a video like this. I don't really see this layout changing too much. It's it's I really, really like it. So the first thing I'll give you guys a little tour here. The first thing that you kind of notice that pops out is the plasma style. Now we have a absolutely beautiful, stunning frosted glass plasma star right here and this is actually custom i made this myself now i'm going to be honest with you guys right i'm 22 years old okay so windows 7 was really the one of the main operating systems i used growing up and it's true what they say like you imprint on the things that you use when you're growing up and i just adore the you know the frosted glass kind of look that that operating system had and, uh, you know, I've gone ahead and made a plasma style that kind of reflects that. Oh, you can see I was learning about FPGAs there. Um, but in any case, yeah, I've, I've tried to bring all of the UI elements from all of the various operating systems that I really enjoyed and pack it into my Linux setup. And you'll see that as we get further on. So obviously, you know, this frosted glass stuff is really derivative of Windows 7. And I've got a couple of different variants on this. You might have noticed the background for this one is a little bit dark, so it's a bit of a darker frosted glass. I've also got one that's a lot more faithful to the original Windows 7, 
This is absolutely gorgeous, this one. The problem is it has some readability issues on different wallpapers. So let me go and swap wallpapers and I'll hopefully be able to show you guys this one a little bit better. Let's try this wallpaper. So yeah, right here, maybe I'll do this one instead. Yeah, yeah, this one. So now you can see it's a really, really just stunning, gorgeous frosted glass effect. I really, really like this effect, guys. It's beautiful. And I actually, so I made these plasma styles. I've, I'll bring them up on screen here. So this one's called Seagull, the sort of faithful recreation. The darker one is called Petrel. These are um, birds that you'd find in the ocean if you didn't know already. Uh, I did release these when I first made them four or five years ago, and I posted them on the subreddit that I can't name, and they did quite well. But I've decided to sort of uh, can that and re-release it underneath Hof.Industries, which is what I'm consolidating all of my public software offerings to be released under. So you can find these on the KDE store and I will link them in the description. I also have Pelican over here. And this one is sort of an invert on the theme. So I've got a, you know, this one here, which is a much lighter, sort of very frosted. This one here is a bit darker. And then Pelican is an invert. So if you've got, and I'll swap wallpapers here to really show you where this one shines. If you've got a very light wallpaper, right? This is a, um, this is a very you know, dark on light style wallpaper, oh, sorry, theme. So the black text really makes this pop, whereas if you had the other ones, it might not look as good. So I choose whichever variant of these I use based on my wallpaper. And so, yeah, that's pretty much the plasma style. I made them myself. It's actually not very involved making a plasma style. They're just SVG files that you can edit with a program like Inkscape. And if you wanted to make your own plasma style, what I would recommend is First, just grab a theme that you really like from the KDE store, and then you can just go in and mod the SVGs that are already there, and you kind of get a feel for, you know, what uh, the panel will look like when you edit this file, right? What file changes the, uh, you know, the thumbnails here when you hover over a window, and the icons and everything like that. So it's actually pretty chill to make a Plasma theme. So to talk about the evolution of the desktop layout, like what I've got here with the top bar, that's very, very thin and everything like that. Originally, I did start off with just the pure Windows KDE lookalike experience, right? Like the bar was down the bottom. It had a simple start menu, like regular kickoff. Um, I had, you know, this was quite big. I didn't have it sort of like this style. It was grouped by icons, everything like that. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is kind of an amalgamation of what I like about the UIs of all the operating systems I've used. So if you've watched some of the earlier content on my channel, I elaborated on how into the Hackintosh scene I was back in the day. And you'll notice that this top bar right here that's pretty thin is quite reminiscent of, you know, what Mac OS is like, except of course without the dock. I decided to go without the dock. I'm not the world's biggest fan of the dock. I love how thin the top bar is, like all the space that it gives me. Um, it's similar to like, you know, you've seen like Polybar on, you know, people's tiling window manager setups and stuff like that. I really do dig that, that kind of thing. But I love the sort of Windows XP because I did use Windows XP quite a bit back in the day. I love the sort of open, um, you know, they're not grouped by icon. You can read what the titles of the windows are. I love that. So, you know, I've got like a Windows 7 frosted glass thing going on. I've got the Mac top bar and I've got like a Windows XP ungrouped by icons type thing going on and yeah no i absolutely love it like this layout i haven't changed in two years it's beautiful it gives me a lot of space it's functional it's perfect it's really really great so a question i can already see myself getting is what do you use all of those monitors for so i'm going to take you guys through some example workflows that i have from time to time and i'll show you what i use all the monitors for so right here I was working on this display driver, which is actually for an e-ink display. And I'll have a video on how to do a display driver kind of like this in the future. But basically you can see here, my workflow is in Kate, which is my preferred text editor. I've got this here on the left-hand side, and then I might have all my hash defines or something like that, or you know another section of code. So I've usually got that on split view. And then up here, I'll have my terminal where I build the project. It doesn't have to be this particular project but any, you know, any kind of project. On this monitor over here, I'll have some kind of research. So this is the data sheet for the uh, controller I see. 
and then up here I'll have like a music player with whatever I'm listening to, something like that. So that's my example developer workflow. And for those wondering, my preferred text editor is Kate. This is Kate by KDE. It's a fantastic piece of software. It's light, it's functional, it integrates with LSP servers. It's beautiful. I never use VS Code again. It's perfect. It integrates so well with KDE Plasma. It's written in Qt. It's great. And you know, it can be an LSP client for everything. So like for C, which is currently what I've got, you know, to get the nice things like, um, you know, the autocomplete and whatnot, you can install LSP servers. So I'm running Clang D for C. For Python, I'm running PyLSP and then Go has Go PLS. Go please, I think it is. But yeah, Kate is my preferred text editor. It's terrific. It's so light. It's so fast. It's beautiful. And I just use it for all my text stuff. Do I use Vim? The answer is yes on the command line. I haven't immersed myself fully in Vim. But um, yeah, anyway, this is my kind of example workflow for software development. It's also really great if you're making something like a GUI application or developing a website, you can have the GUI up here and then down here is where you've got your code and then you've got your like documentation research stuff over here on this other screen. But yeah, so for GUI applications, having this many monitors is absolutely gorgeous because this is kind of what the view is like. It's great. The final workflow I'm gonna show you guys is for LaTeX. So I actually do all of my writing and documents in LaTeX. I can't remember the last time that I did a document in anything other than LaTeX that I put online, that I submitted for an assignment or something like that. And all my friends, they're like, dude, you use LaTeX for that? How you do that? How are you so fast? Like, that must have been such a hassle. But really, like, you know, when you've got a view like this, LaTeX is really easy because you've got your document up here, you've got your text down here, you've got your, you know, reference over here. And I'm actually like way faster with LaTeX, faster than Word documents or anything like that, I would say now. But yeah, these are some example workflows that I that I can show you guys. So lastly, we're going to talk about why I'm using Artix as a distribution. And for this, I've actually gone and chosen a wallpaper that really shows off the Pelican theme really nicely, like the whole uh, black on white looks really, really good here. So essentially with my laptops that I use for work and the surface that I had down below there, I'm actually looking for stability. So they run Debian stable. There's nothing crazy going on there. I need them to work every single day of the week. I do love to tinker and Arch is a natural tinkers distribution, just like mainline Arch. And that's what I ran for a very long time. I was running mainline Arch on this system until maybe early 2022. So from like 2019 to 2022, I was just running mainline Arch. And the question is, why would I switch to Artix? So Artix, essentially for me, I love to tinker. And what is one more thing to replace other than your init system? I just wanted to try it initially. Like I just wanted to try it. I don't hate system D, although I do disagree with how far they've taken things recently. Um, but that's besides the point. I just love to tinker. OpenRC looks like a cool project. It's very similar to BSD in it's like the one on my FreeBSD server, which is nice because the commands are pretty similar. I don't have to memorize a whole different bunch for, for each one. But um, yeah, apart from that, like Tinkerer's distribution is Arch. I love trying out the latest and greatest stuff. Like I'm on Plasma 6 here. I think if I was on Debian Stable, I'd still be on Plasma 5. But yeah, so for this one here, where I'd just like to mess around with stuff, try stuff. It's a dev machine, you know, like I like to get in really in with the latest software. So that's great. But everything I need to be stable is running Debian. So essentially like I've got a split. My server's running FreeBSD. If you wanna see that, I'll link the video in the description. This machine here is running Artix, obviously. And then all of the rest of my computers are running Debian stable. So that's pretty much my stack. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a lot of fun demoing all of this and I hope you were along for the ride. Let me know what your setups are like. I'm really keen to hear about it in the comments. Thanks.